Welcome to another episode of Lucas Live. Excited to have you guys here again today. This is our third episode in 24 hours. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention. Maybe you're watching this by replay. Maybe you're catching this a year from now on YouTube or somewhere, and you had no idea this mad race that we've been running for the last two months. Uh, but especially in the last 24 hours, we had an amazing episode yesterday evening with my friend Randall Randy Sistrunk. He talked about his journey from growing up in the inner city to getting in trouble to gangs and violence to uh, graduating college, going into the College Hall, Basketball Hall of Fame at his school, um, becoming a successful businessman, working with the mayor of Columbus, Ohio, and doing so many more things. It was fascinating, wasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? If you were here, you know what I'm talking about. It was crazy, just his story of how he overcame so many obstacles to becoming this successful, strong black businessman. He was suited up last yesterday, if you saw it. He was sitting in an office somewhere, fancy, I don't know, with the windows open behind him, and I think he was flying. I don't know what was going on, but it was amazing. It was incredible. It was so cool to have him on and to hear his story. We don't hear stories like that enough so it was super cool to see as we're living in this day and age where black men are often looked at as threats when i knew randy when we were in high school he had braids back gold chains and i guarantee somebody would have thought he was a threat and he might have been a little bit of a threat back then i don't know but he's not a threat anymore he's doing things to improve our community and society as a whole and he's just an amazing guy it was such a fun show then this morning, the first ever Lucas Live morning show. Lucas Live in the morning, ladies and gentlemen. Kicking it off because we're going to do some more of those morning shows. If you were here this morning, you guys let me know if you enjoyed the morning show this morning. That was a lot of fun. It was 8 a.m. Eastern for people who were here. I went to the gym at 5 a.m., so I was already up. You know, I'm like, hey, let's make it happen, right? Uh, even though I do like I do like to get a nap after the gym. I don't know if anybody else would confess that you go to the gym and then you're up and you talk junk on, on social media like, yeah, I get up at 5 in the morning and I'm at the gym and I work out more than everybody. But then you come home and go to bed and you don't tell anybody about that part. I'm going to just be honest. I go back to sleep. Anyway, Kim go back to sleep. Had a morning show. And we had the wonderful Antonio Hall, the new athletic director for Canton McKinley High School, a great friend of mine, uh, exciting story. We talked about the great coach Tom McDaniels, the father of Josh McDaniels, who uh, is Tom, was Tom Brady's quarterback coach and offensive coordinator for the New England Patriots. And we had a great discussion about all the legacy and history of the great Canton McKinley High School and the Pro Football Hall of Fame and the Pro Football Hall of Fame field and our time there. It was so much fun. And, and the views are just nuts. I mean, the, you guys are just watching it and sharing it and talking about it. So right now, if you're here, I want to welcome you so far. And I want to ask you to share. We, we talk a lot about sharing on the show because sharing is caring, right? We're like care bears out here, right? We want to share with people. We want to we want to show them that, that we have great content. And we talked about the difference between being a creator of content and a curator of content. You may be a creator and you put out great posts and great stuff. And or you may be a curator. You post the latest news articles and the funny memes and Lucas Live, hopefully. I mean, if you're a curator of content and you're putting out great stuff for people to check out on your social media, why not share Lucas Live? I mean, it's great content, isn't it? I think so. And we have an amazing, amazing guest today. Um, she is just dynamic. She has so much personality. She's just somebody who I just, she's helped me be more me. Because when she goes live, she goes live. She doesn't care about what people are thinking and what's going on. It's her to the camera, and she's lights, camera, action. Even if there's no lights and cameras, she's all action. So much energy, so much passion, so much fun. I can't wait to bring her on. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've shared this broadcast, I want you to type shared in the comments. We're going to start doing that as the normal thing here on Lucas Live. When you come to the show, let us know that you shared. And if I find out any of y'all are lying, oh, don't let me find out. You jumping in the comments talking about shared and you're not talking about you shared the show. You shared something else. I don't want to know if you shared anything else. That's fine. I want you to share this broadcast so that other people who are just scrolling along, minding their own business, will be like, oh, what is this great show? Oh, wait, I never saw this before. Who are these people? What is this going on? Oh, this is amazing. I'm glad I found it. Thank you, person, for helping me. So thank you, guys. I see you guys. I see the shares. Amanda, thank you for being here. My wonderful producer, Amanda Jean Duke. Shout out to her. Corinne, Corinne Marie Tindell, my beautiful, lovely wife. Thank you for all of your love and support, sweetie. She was the first one in the comments. That's not easy to do. She was ready. She must have been on my page, like, just ready to just, just, aren't just can't wait, okay? Because she's a huge fan of Nicole Walters as well. 
Um, she, her and I, uh, my wife and I had a chance to meet Nicole um, about a year, little over a year ago. It was just by chance, and we shot our shot, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to tell you all the story. We shot our shot. We wasn't playing. We was like, I think that's her. We going to interrupt her breakfast. We we are messing up her brunch right now, and we did, and she was amazing. So let's tell you about that in just a minute. JJ Lilly, thank you so much for your love and support, for always being here for us. You are here every day, JJ Lilly. You just block off everything else on your calendar. You don't care rain, shine, whatever. How beautiful the day is, whatever else is going on in the world. You shut the world off for Lucas Live, JJ. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, my good friend Ebony Akron. Shout out to Miss Ebony Hill, Ebony Hill Tastic. Uh, check her out at bookebony.com, bookebony.com. She does relationship coaching. Her and her husband do a lot of great things. And they have some cool stuff coming up with Juneteenth in Akron, Ohio, the city of the rubber city, but it's the city of LeBron now. I think they might change it. I don't know. Uh, but that's so cool. I'm so glad you guys are here. Sharice, thank you so much for always being here, always supporting the show. Everybody else who's jumping in, make sure you share this broadcast. We're so excited to have you all here. Whether you're here on Facebook, LinkedIn, Periscope, YouTube, however you found us, we are welcoming you into the room. We want you to come on in and we want you to share this broadcast so that others can join us. You guys don't want to miss today's episode. My guest today, I don't I don't want to wait any longer. You know, you I mean I could just sit here and talk and make you guys wait. Y'all wanna y'all don't want to wait? You guys are tired of hearing from me? Is that what you're saying? Is that what? Okay. All right. Well, I don't want to make you wait any longer. As long as you guys keep hitting those hearts and showing that love and, and calling your neighbors and your friends and texting somebody and say, are you watching Lucas Live? You don't want to miss this. You know it's on live, right? You know it's a podcast, but it's like a video podcast, but it's like a live video podcast. I don't even know how this dude does it. He's on like five days a week, sometimes more. He's done game night. He's done concerts. This guy is crazy, but the show is amazing, right? Tell your family, tell your friends, they don't want to miss it. Tonight's a special night. I want to welcome my wonderful, wonderful guest, Miss Nicole Walters. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much for having me, Lucas. I am so excited to have you. Um, there are a few people in the world who were like targets. They were like, if I have a show and I could get this person as a guest... <laughs> You were one of those people, and when no I asked my wife, Corinne, tell, tell the truth, when your assistant got back to us, uh, your producer, your your whoever, Tanya, the wonderful Tanya, got back yeah. and said, I was like, my wife was like, don't sound too desperate. I was like, uh, too late. I was already oh like, please, I would love to have her. Nicole, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. My joy. Uh Due to pandemic time, obviously I am at home, but it is also my joy to reconnect with you guys because, uh, you know, it's been a long time coming and we didn't get enough time to chat last time. So this is this is terrific. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. It was so cool. I, I, I started this story earlier, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to share this story and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask some questions. I'm going to shut up and I'm going to let the wonderful Nicole Walters educate, motivate and liberate us. Nicole, our, our, our motto here is education, motivation, liberation. We want to teach. It. We want to teach them something. We want to motivate them to do something with what they've learned. Mm -hmm. You know, like oh, I know stuff, but I don't do stuff. That's I want right. them to know stuff, do stuff, and then be set free to do it, and not fear right. the confines and constructs of the things that we allow to hold us back. And you're a perfect example it. of that. So, so I can't wait Thank for them you. to hear your story. Yes. Awesome. So we met uh, in Cleveland. It was this quaint little brunch restaurant with super cute spot, <laughs> wasn't it? With all these paintings and oh. architecture. Hold on, Nicole. Nicole, she just quit. She just slammed her phone down. Almost lost you there for a split second. Okay. It was like, oh, my goodness. And Almost lost you for a split second. All right, great. You're back. There we go. Right. Yes, I'm here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know this why she did like, that. <laughs> this is what it looks like when I am not in a studio, when I don't have all my setup, when we are just trying to make it happen with what we got. So here's where we are. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We're I'm making not. it happen. <laughs> it's working. So we were at this amazing little restaurant. My wife looked over and said, I think that's Nicole Walters. 
and I looked back. I thought I was in disguise. I just want to say for the record, no. it was, so I, um, being African, am not predisposed to the cold. I, I cannot do it. I literally moved from Maryland, right, it was which January. is not Ohio, right. from Maryland to Georgia because I was like, I can't do it. And Georgia had like about a half inch of snow this year, and I was like, you know, Florida's looking real good, honey. I really, like, I just, I am not cut out for it. It's for- not my ministry. And on that day, I will never forget, it was cold to the bones for me cold to the bones it was. and some snow had come down yes and i remember and i'd already moved to georgia at that point so i remember coming up and being like oh no this is not this is not of god i cannot do this, <laughs> I cannot do this weather and you guys just come in all skipping like nothing even happened like it was a toasty day i'm like well it's the food must be good here because this is this right here is, is I'm not with it. <laughs> it was beautiful for us. We're used to this madness. Ooh, I think. I kept hearing that. I kept hearing, oh, this is not that bad. Oh, it's just a dusting. I was over here like, can someone turn up the heat though? <laughs> like, oh, it was rough, rough for me. It was amazing. So we come in, we see you. You're hiding, sort of, but not, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I had them like bundled up. I had my head wrap on. I'm just here like. No one's going to recognize. And also, I'm like, I'm in Cleveland at a random brunch spot. Right. You know, With on Main Street. Four people in the whole restaurant. Right. right. Four people here. It'll be fine. Right. <laughs> right. My wife, she said, I recognize you and your voice. She heard your voice. And that's what she was like. I know her. It's me. That gets me every time. So even when my kids, in, and because my kids know I'm extroverted, so I talk to strangers, even when I go to, uh, like, Target or any type of store, my kids are always like, yeah, we just wait. To, if we lose you, we just wait to listen for your voice because we know you're talking to some stranger. That's I'm like, you know what? Stop reading me my rights. You don't know me. <laughs> you don't know me, kids. Back up. <laughs> I am the mother. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cool. She was like, that's her, I think. And I looked back, you know, with the look but don't look. She was like, look but don't look. And I was like, uh, I look back. Uh, yes, that's the movie. Got a young. <laughs> is that her? Stretching my neck off, really. Yes. There she is. That's her. And my wife was oh, like, please. we need to go over and talk to her. She always says on her live streams and her stuff, she always says, approach Hi. me. Yeah. So here we go. And we're like, my wife was like, should we order? I'm like, no, she might leave. Like, if we're going to do it, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. I love that. You guys work well together because I tell you, usually it's like, the wife will want to go over, but the husband's like, leave her alone. Or like the husband's like, I'm going over. No, 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 don't bother her. Like, usually it's like that. I love that you guys are like, so we're going over. The question is when. Yes, that's all <laughs> it was. For that. Yes. So we, we we agreed. We didn't order. Or maybe we had ordered and our food was coming. We're like, the food can get cold. We don't care. And right. we went over and you were 100% you. Like, it was like a lot. It was, it was Nicole Walters live. You were personality you were like <laughs> i'm paying for it It was our anniversary it was our wedding anniversary yes, our tenth anniversary. An yes you were like get whatever you want you were like waiter waitress bring them food <laughs> bring them this we were sitting there like <laughs> we're like i hope she don't leave because we can't afford all that i hope she needs this <laughs> but it was, it was amazing yes so all right so tell us a little bit Let, let's let's get into who you are you're obviously uh a people person you love people you are like ascending into celebrity status, but never allowing yourself to get there. It's the weirdest thing. Tell us a little no, bit I'm about totally yourself. I'm totally regular. I think that's the part that <laughs> I like to say I'm in this world, but not of this world yes. when it comes to this whole celebrity business. So it's like uh, I started off just like anyone else, corporate job, you know, with a little side hustle. I was blogging, things like that. And then, uh, you know, after working corporate for over a decade with multi-billion dollar corporations, you know, um, handling their business, I was like, you know, I'm here consulting in a boardroom and helping everyday people when in, or helping, you know, major corporations. But in reality, everyday entrepreneurs need this information too. They need to know how to sell. They need to know how to pitch. They need to know how to close. They need to know how to prospect. They need to know how to lead. Like they deserve to grow and develop great products that actually serve. But no one's giving them these tools you're expected to know how to be great at your skill whatever the services you offer and excellent at your business and i want to take at least one of those off your plate so that's where i come in that is amazing so when it comes to taking that off of the plate of entrepreneurs which first of all what an amazing calling and a passion because there's a lot of money out there in corporate america right sure 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 there's a lot more when you work for yourself (laughs) tell them i love it the comfort tax, right? Like, yes. so I don't pay that fee, which, you know, I'm not knocking it. Being a nine to fiver, I get it. That comfort tax can be right. There are days where I miss my PTO and I miss having someone else in charge of the office, you know, right. but 
at the end of the day, it's a risk that I was comfortable with. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. I, and now, you quit your job live on a live stream on Periscope, I, I believe, in tears, all out. We've I watched did. it many times. We've yeah, seen it on our phones, okay. our computers, our, because we, we were, we are uh, uh, your, 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 one of your rich friends. We're some of your rich friends, yes. so we've seen it yes. all. We'll have to talk about that. <laughs> but tell us about what in the world was going on in your mind. How long before that had you made up your mind about doing this? And then what told you, I'm going to do it on live streaming? That was, that, people weren't even live streaming then. That wasn't like... We, right. There was no Facebook Live. There was no YouTube Live. People right. weren't really live That's streaming. That's true. Why? How? How did you come to yeah, that decision? Yeah, so I, you know what's funny? I, a lot of people don't ask me. A lot of people are like, were you scared? Like in the moment? So a lot of people don't ask me how I got there. So I'll answer this. So yeah. what's interesting was it wasn't as unexpected as it seemed. Like most right. people who uh, you hear like, oh, that so flight attendant quit their job by like just, you know, pulling the, the inflatable and sliding down. Like it just sounds dramatic, but it wasn't that <laughs> unexpected. Right. Um, you know, most people who watched saw that I was sharing my journey to entrepreneurship online. And I'd been doing that for, at that point, almost a year, right. you know, in just different forms, whether I was going live and sharing it, or I was tracking it through like blog posts, things like that, just saying, look, I still work a nine to five, but this is what I'm leaning towards. This is where I'm headed. And, um, and it just, honestly, it came to the point where I was like, I need my hours back. Like mm. I just, I need my time. Like I, need this time to invest into my business because I've got clients. I think that in the, at that point on that day, I was supposed to be in Tennessee within 24 hours for a event that I was doing for my blog. So it was one of those things where it was like, I had to quit because I couldn't be there. Do you know what I mean? Like it just wasn't, there really weren't any options. Now I was like, I could make it work, but it just felt like everything was coming to a head. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this. Like, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to leave. And, um, and I kept it classy, you know, I called mm -hmm. my boss and I, I just did that call live, but I'm not going to lie. I was terrified. Wow. And now I look back on it and the things I was scared of were not even the real things to be scared of. I was scared of like, what if this doesn't work? What if I embarrass myself? What if he says the biggest fear I had was what if he was like, well, good riddance. I don't care. <laughs> Right. That he was gonna be like, okay. my girl, right? You know, bye, Felicia, get out of here. I was so terrified that that was like on the phone. Right. But in reality, I'll never forget. My boss was so kind and so considerate, and ninety nine percent of that was in my head, you know. And he was like, "Look, like go, you know, be successful. I wish I could, you know, uh, do more things that were aligned with my passion, wow. and you know, like go for it. If you have a plan, go." At one point, he said to me, "If you're making six figures doing what you love, why are you here?" Mm. And it was just like, "You're right," you know. <laughs> Great and, I just, question. And, and that was it, you know. And that was it. And I left, and I never looked back. So, Nicole, you're telling me and everybody watching that it's possible to make six figures as an entrepreneur. Now, before you answer that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who have side hustles that they never it's it's a side hustle is like a side chick. They yeah. never plan on marrying there. They never plan on making yeah. it their yeah. real thing. You're 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 here telling us that it is absolutely possible to make your side hustle your main hustle. Absolutely. Uh, not only is it possible. Uh, it's not as hard as one would feel um, because it really is the formula. I think a lot of people think, oh, my gosh, it's just not happening for me. It's just not working out. But the reality is, again, and I emphasize this, people should leave themselves with that guilt that they're not having a successful business because you're only good at your craft. Right. So mm. if you're a baker, your job is to bake. Right. right. And you are forced to be a CEO because you're doing it independently. But there are answers, formula skills like that part is actually not the hard part. It's hard to figure out how to make a perfect meringue. It is not hard to figure out how to set up your business bank accounts and stuff like that. You're just not an expert. But those answers are out there and I help people get them. I love it. To give people a sneak peek, because we're education, motivation, liberation, to yes. educate people. You said a bank account. What are some of the first steps mm -hmm. somebody should take? They're thinking about starting a business. They've been thinking about this business. They've been dreaming yeah. about this business sure. for 100 years, and their closest friends have heard about it, and they're like, it's a great idea. You should do it. And they're like, I'm going to do it yeah. as soon as I get off work, and I'm not sleepy. Right. And that never happens. Right. What are some of the basics that people need to do just to start the momentum to build their business? Yeah, well, one of the first things I always tell people to do is just go online and file for your uh, EIN. 
It's totally free. It's available online. It takes about five minutes to apply for. Right. And your EIN is equivalent to your business social security number. It's you sort of raising your hand saying, hey, I'm a real business. I'm going to file taxes someday under this number, and this is what I need. And the reason why you start there is you can use your EIN to get a business bank account. And this is probably one of the most important parts of being a business owner that a lot of people forget. Uh, people will take a dollar and say, well, my business isn't making much, so it's just a dollar, so who cares? Mm. But if you take a dollar for a service, you are officially a business, even if it feels like a hobby. So you want to make sure that you're tracking that accordingly, that you are separating your business funds from your personal funds, and that you're depositing things into the right account so that they can be tracked accordingly, and so that you can see, you know, what's working and what's not working, what's selling and what isn't selling. And and it's this concept that they teach in business school called going concern. And, you know, it sounds fancier than it is, but basically, right. when you're starting your business on the first day, you're not starting it with the intent for it to close on the seventh day. You're right. not saying, oh, I'm opening a restaurant, but let's not bother with food because we're going to be closed down <laughs> in 15 days. Right. Who cares? No, you do everything with the intent that you'll be here for 50 years. Yes. So even if you are just hauling your veggies or your jams or your quilts down to the local farmer's market, you still need to remember that you know the goal is eventually to have a shop and to, to have four or five different stores and to end up on the New York Stock Exchange. And if indeed all of these things are your intention, someday because that's what happens with a successful business mm -hmm. well then you got to take those steps and the place to start is by separating out your funds and setting up a business bank account accordingly i love it i love it i love it education and we're going to yes. motivate and liberate some people too today now nicole you said some of the things about sort of like uh, an exit strategy that's not an exit strategy as in i don't want to be in business but maybe there's another step right. you want to take so i don't know that i've heard you say this before but what is your thought about the future of your company? Tell us a little bit, if you can, about sure. the, the size and scope, uh, whatever you want to tell of us about that. And, that. and yeah. then um, what is the future of your company? Sure. So, I mean, presently right now, we operate a business education firm. That's our primary revenue. So mm -hmm. my business education firm started out under my own name. It was Nicole Walters, you know, mm -hmm. and um, my name is trademarked. So I own it. I'm the, the only Nicole Walters that's recognized the mm -hmm. U.S. government. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but uh, but that said, you know, that's where I've launched all my business education products. And we help people with um, online digital education and live experiences, as well as one to one coaching um, and consulting to help grow their businesses. So that's the primary bread and butter of the business. Now, mm -hmm. recently um, and really over the past five years, the brand's really grown exponentially. So presently, it's a multi million dollar business. We have a full corporate headquarters here in Atlanta, and I have about 20 employees. Wow. So it's grown really, really large. However, um, so has my personal brand. Now, my personal brand, um, you know, which is really just following my life, right? Like nowadays, whenever there's a CEO, we kind of want to know something about them. What do they believe in? What are their ethics? What does their family values look like? Because I don't want anyone being my consultant who thinks it's okay to run themselves ragged and put their family second because we're mm. not going to see eye to eye, you know, uh, when it comes to business decisions. You're going to say, work yourself to death, and I'm going to be like, I'm going to go make dinner for you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> my kids are hungry. I'm out. My kids are hungry, right? So because of that, I've always been very open about sharing kind of who I am, what I do, and who I serve. And because I've given that back um, behind the scenes glimpse, you know, I, that has actually taken off. People really enjoyed sort of watching the journey and seeing how I balance it all. So because, because of that, I've had opportunities to, you know, do interviews and to, um, you know, speak on stages and do keynotes and uh, get book deals and TV deals. So the Nicole Walters brand has really expanded exponentially by itself. So we've split off the two brands, the business education firm, as well as my personal brand. Mm -hmm. And uh, the business education firm has been rebranded as Inherit Learning Company. So um, the multi-million dollar business, the team, all that stuff, mm -hmm. Inherit Learning Company is now headquartered here in Atlanta. And Nicole Walters is global and worldwide. Wow. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Nicole, now you've been you in U.S. Weekly, on Good Morning America, mm -hmm. Fox News, Forbes, all these amazing things, which is just unbelievable. Why in the world are you on Lucas Live? I mean, I think Lucas Live is the best <laughs> show ever. Okay, don't get me wrong. And and one day everybody's like, "You're the next Montel. You're the next this, the next yes. that." Right? I'm. Who knows? I I think I am. I believe it. God yes. is able. Why not? Yes. So one day, yes, somebody's gonna look back and they're gonna be like, "You had Nicole Walters way back then when you was just <laughs> little Lucas in the in your little home studio." That's crazy. But um, yes. why? 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 Why do you make time for? 
everyday people like me, we met, yes, but it's not like we've been in touch every day ever since. And I, when I reached out to you and to your team, I thought, eh, my chances aren't that great. Not that you were some fancy celebrity, but that you're just busy and you're running a business right. and you have a family right. and you share all that. So well, I see you in the garden well. and I see you with the family and I see you in the business. I'm like, she don't have time for me. Why would you come on a show of someone like me who's just getting started? Well, I hope you remember this, you know, when you are the next Montel, you know, when you are the next Ellen, that, um, you know, somebody somebody helped you when you were, you know, down there. And also keep in mind that I don't think I'm that fancy. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I, I do what I feel like doing. <laughs> like, as crazy as it sounds, you know, like when I, uh, you know, so I have a TV deal that's out right now and we're filming in production for USA Network. And so wow. that... Um, show deal that's in you know it's it's gonna air like you know all that stuff that we want the we inside scoop filming. so anyway go ahead yeah, keep going. No, it's good. okay it's gonna air it's you know what is this what is this show on, what, what are you talking about yeah it's on usa network and it's based on uh, me and my business and how i balance the two right so my wow. you know i'm a mom my family is crazy but i also need to get on stage so basically i'm on stage everyone's like well wow, nicole you're brilliant and i come home and everyone's like yeah yeah mom whatever you know what I mean? <laughs> like, so it's just a humorous look at sort of what that what that life is like but right. that said even though i have a show at the end of the day before one of the things i always offer to everyone is make sure you have your own so that you're always able to do what serves you and serves your heart and what feels right. Mm. And so that's why I can be on a show like this is because it doesn't matter if I make $4 billion. If, if I, <laughs> what's the point of having that money if I can't do what I want with my time, you know, as much as I'm able, you wow. know? And so what I want to do with my time is I wanted to be on your show, you know? That's I was a... like, I met him, I know him, they were lovely. It would be great to be on their show. Sure, why not? You know, so, wow. and that's an integrity with who I am. Now, I, I do believe that, um, there is a lot of, especially in Atlanta, I've learned this, there is a lot of people kind of, you're famous, or you have a lot of followers, or you've done these things. Eh, you know, those are just labels and stuff. If I didn't have any of those things, like, I'd still be me, right? You right, know? So right. let's hope that that's still good enough to be on the show and share information and, you know, help people or whatever else. So yeah, that's why I would be on the show. And hopefully, you know, you'll feel the same way, even when everybody's telling you about how fancy you are and they can't believe that you you know have eight <laughs> emmys and all that stuff you'll still be like you know what i have no problem popping on to someone's live broadcast and saying hey what's up you know nicole i i can't thank you enough for it um and as surprised as i was i suppose there was a part of me that was like this is who she is this is who she is just like when we came up to you in the restaurant that day you and you even talk about it about Having a level of celebrity, but like being in it, but not of it, right? Like, like yeah, I am I feel not... very regular. Like, if you believe it or not, I feel very regular. Like, I literally, you want to see how regular I am? So, Buckle up, you, ladies I'm and at gentlemen. home right now. <laughs> I'm home. So, like, I'm here. This is overalls. I literally only fancy from the top up. Like, I'm not even kidding. I'm wearing overalls. Like, I love and it. I was like, okay, well, they're not going to see me. So, I'll just go ahead and do one of these numbers and make it look like my life is together. Like, I but I was it. like, I'm not going to take off the whole outfit. But that's, the, that's like, really how I am. And so people always are like, but, Nicole, I don't get it. Like, you're so fancy. No, I, I shop at Target. Like, these overalls were $13. And I actually found another pair next to it that were 11 These were at Walmart. And I took them both to the counter. And I was like, this is marked as 11 And they're the same brand. You better take off my $2. <laughs> like, like, you have a multi-million dollar business. But this is just who you are. This is who I am. And, like, and it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know why I would need to act fancy. Like, I know fancy people, and fancy people aren't fancy. Right. You know what I mean? Like, when you get in their house, they're very, very regular. You would be surprised. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm just the person kind of ripping the lid off of everything, but, like, all these people on social and stuff, they are more regular than you know. Like, I love it. Everybody has their mess. So I love that it. That said... It's my joy, <laughs> but but you're gonna get what you're gonna get with me. I keep that bar low so that no one ever expects anything else. Nicole, that looks like. I told my wife today. I I like. <sighs> I held up two shirts. Like I, I usually wear like a t-shirt and a hat or something, right, for the show. And I'm doing my best to not get fancy or to not be different. I am in a stage of liberation in my life where I do, I want to be free from all the confines and constructs. I've had three jobs in my life. I was fired from one. I was recruited from a company to go to another one, and I was laid off from that job. So three jobs, uh, twenty years, twenty year career. Wow. Uh, success, uh, executive director, VP, all kinds of cool stuff, travel, consulting, great stuff. 
But still, when businesses want to do what they want to do, whether it's right or not, they did what they wanted to do. And I always okay. found myself trying to comply and follow the rules. And mm -hmm. I was a super compliant mm -hmm. person. And now mm -hmm. I'm free. You crazy people let me go. I don't know what you were thinking. I don't care what your business yeah. was going through. I right. bring so much to the table, but cool. Now I'm going to be me. I'm going to be free and I'm going to do whatever mm -hmm. I want. And you're just a perfect example of that. I told my wife today I had on this shirt and I held up another shirt and I said, honey, which one should I wear? She said, probably that one. It was a little fancier. She was like, probably that right. one. I was like, but Nicole might be wearing overalls. She said, to do I what you got to do. I literally, like, two seconds in was like, do you want to know what my factor was for putting on something fluffy? I was like, oh, I think he's streaming this on LinkedIn. That was it. Was like, <laughs> that was literally my only factor. I was That's like, if this was on LinkedIn, I probably would just be like, it's what, you going to get what you're going to get. You know what I mean? But I was like, LinkedIn's kind of We fluffy. are on the Let LinkedIn act network. Like I have some sense. You know what I mean? But I'm not kidding. The minute I got on, I was like, oh, he's in a hat. Man. That's what I'm oh. thinking. I had a whole moment. I had a whole moment, like, I'm out here sweating. And what is this material anyways? Plastic? <laughs> chiffon? Like, what am I doing right now in my life, what you know? This? But it's okay. It's just, you know, it's whatever. It's just, I don't know what people think. Like, you, I mean, the truth is you leave corporate and you do have that moment where you're, I remember one of the first things I did when I left corporate was I put on, I got my nails done like hot pink. Because it was like, you know, I I do, it's the basic, basic, you know, tight stuff. Yep. But then after that, I realized, no, like, you in entrepreneurship you don't get to do what you want either you know what i mean like you still have schedules you still have True. you know things that you can honor but you do the things that you have to do so that when you have your free time you truly can do what you want with your free time and Love you can it. show up in ways that honor and are in integrity with who you are and you're able to say no more yes. you know and you're able to say yes when it counts and like that's the thing that i really enjoy about entrepreneurship that's like really what is the win for me i'm at a point now in my you know five years of careful steady work yes. where i can say no to certain clients and i can say no to certain opportunities and like you know tv deals i had tv deal opportunities my first year out that i said no to i had a book mm. deal my first year out and i said no to that wow and i'm glad i did because you know one i was making enough that i was able to do it but two you know the things that i have that i have now I, that i'm proud of you know what i mean and that's a um and I'm all proud, not just proud of, but I can say no at any point in time. And when the energy, when you are, when you're on set and you're filming and everyone knows at any point in time, you could just be like, I, I'm not pressed. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll do what I want. I'm not going to do that. That's not in, in alignment for me. Right. You know, like, and not like I'm, I'm great. I'm very like chill about 99% of it. But if something's not an integrity, I'm just not going to do it just to be on TV. Like I'm not a housewife. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm not you know, press to, you know, I mean, I'm not going to catch me fighting with people. You're not going to catch me flipping tables. Like, it's just not my ministry. That's not my thing. And so it's, uh, but I have that flexibility because the choices I've made. So you're making the choices now that are setting the foundation for your true freedom. Hmm. That's going to come soon after, but you're earning it, you know, and, I and you never it. get there unless you finally decide, okay, I'm going to make a big shift, even if it's staying in the job, but you know, I'm going to make a big shift and start securing my future elsewhere. That's just so incredible. And you're a trailblazer for so many others. Um, there's people out there who watch like Gary V and other people who are just yeah. all themselves. Right. And I think he just, he's a little crazy, but he does show like, you can he show up good things though. That makes sense. Apps, he's brilliant. Right. Mm -hmm. My son all the time. My son is always like, Gary Vee would tell me to sell this all the time. He's 16. Yeah, He's like, Gary Vee would tell me to go to a garage sale and sell this or something. That's I'm like, so true. yes, he that's would. So true. And mm -hmm. you are um, black excellence. You are black girl oh, magic. <laughs> you are doing it at a level that is it's inspiring, especially in a day. I know you've been doing yeah. it right. But in a day and age where we're seeing so many um, uh, we're, we're seeing such an uprising right now and an awakening, I think, mm -hmm. in a way. And I yeah, pray to God yeah. people stay woke because I'm like, don't doze off. Wait, wait, wake up, wake up, stay up, stay up, stay up. And that's I everybody. I know, I know. Right? Um, what do you think it means for you as a black woman? And, and not to not to minimize that you're everything, right? Not just a black sure. woman, sure. but to that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yes. But what do you what do you think it says to the young black entrepreneur? Uh, when they see your story and one day soon see your show on USA? Yeah, I think one of the things that I really like about what we're bringing with the show as well as uh, what I showcase online is one, like my family's made up, we're a mix, right? Yes. So like I adopted my daughters. And so my three daughters are adopted. They're all different ages, eight, 18, 21. You know, my, um, my husband's a Jewish male, you know, my, my nanny is this, you know, gay black guy, you know, like we're just, uh, we're a hot <laughs> the United right. nations in here, you know, right. just a hot mess. There's a right? big table. And, um, right. <laughs> you have and a I'm meeting. Like, I'm 
African. I grew up totally, completely poor. And now I'm the 1%. So like, wow. and you know, my parents were all laborers, but you know, I've had elite education. Like it's just, mm. we, I truly can understand a lot of perspectives because I've actually lived them, you right. know? And I think that what's great is one, hopefully anyone who watches or sees anything we do can see a little bit of themselves in us. Yes. And then two, I just hope that I'm encouraging. You know, one of the things I try to tell people is like, if God can do it for me, he can do it for you. Yes. And I just want people to see what we're doing in our life and hopefully see him and then see that, you know, the possibilities are there. And that's the biggest thing that I do is I just decide. I'm not fearless. I just figure it out. Mm. I just figure it out and I just keep moving forward. Like people think, oh, yeah, well, she's fearless. She I thought you were fearless. This. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, what? I'm, I'm appropriately and consistently terrified most of the time. <laughs> what? Like, oh, yeah, you no, show I'm, up fearless. I just, no, and the thing is, it's, it's not that I'm afraid. I just do it with the fear. <laughs> you know, I okay. just do it anyways. And more than anything, I remember that the fear of not honoring the gifts that God's put me on this planet and not helping the people I've been called to help, that scares me more than just the fear of being judged or the fear mm. of showing up or the fear. Someone will have something to say about everything I do. You can walk on water and people will be like, oh, that girl can't swim. That's a you true story. I mean? like, true story. Right. People will have something to say about you no matter what you do. Right. So it's just one of those things where it's like, no, that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. I just have to be more afraid of not serving in my gift. And mm. the good always outweighs the bad. So so that's the part that has me going forward. And I, that's the thing I hope people see is just look like it, the good outweighs the bad. Like it's always worth it. Even if you lose, it's still worth it. Motivate them, motivate them, motivate them. <laughs> Education, motivation, liberation. Yes. I love it. Working through the fear. Now, so often we're taught, especially entrepreneurs, you got to be fearless. You got to be fearless. Right. And we're go all. For it, go for it. Yeah, we're all half scared. Like literally, yeah. people think like, okay, I, I I have a comfort level, okay, doing this, mm -hmm. and I've only been doing mm -hmm. this two and a half months, but I have a comfort level doing yeah, this. Yeah, they're great. Um, thank you. I but there's a level of fear. There's always a scramble right before the show. Definitely. Every episode, Definitely. I'm like, it ain't gonna happen today. This is today, Definitely. right? Nicole did. Definitely. True story. Yeah, we almost, it almost like, didn't happen. My Wi-Fi is not working. It's the internet. Um, I don't know what we're going to do. So. Right. <laughs> so what is it? And the only reason I know how to troubleshoot is because every day something goes terribly wrong right before I push go live. But I go live. And, and I and I have shared this with the audience. This show is dedicated to my mom. Sadly, she passed away on March 26th of this year. Um, and I decided I had to go live. I had to live yeah. because life is yeah. short. Um, and I decided to go live by going live. And I pushed yeah, go live. Well, your consistency is honestly like, so I get notifications on LinkedIn. It's the one I just haven't gotten around to shutting them off because uh, I can't get notifications on keep most them apps. On. Otherwise, my phone would be just <laughs> like all the time. Right? right. So I still get my notifications. And I'm telling you, I'm like, he is going live again. <laughs> Woo! Like, like, he is on it. He is consistent. Crazy. Like, I right. like you have been at forefront of my mind. Little do you know, wow. every, every time you go live, I've been seeing it on my phone. Like, your name pops up in front of me probably like twice, once or twice a day, whenever you go right, live. Right. So every time that's been showing up, I've been saying to myself, okay, because that's how I was when I first started. You could have caught me on Periscope two, three times a day. Yeah, I if remember. I was watching, I didn't have an email list. So if I didn't tell you where you were, you didn't know where to go to buy. Wow. So I was showing up up regularly because i was going to stay in your face until you knew how much i liked you Ooh. that was like you wanted to buy i'm you will not forget me because i'm here so make no mistake I like love it. it was that consistency that caught the eye of someone you know what i mean like and that's what happens if you keep at it eventually people are going to be like the right person's going to come along and they're going to be like i am sharing this this guy's awesome and it will happen but Understand that that's the thing. People like to be like, oh, entrepreneurs, grind, be fearless, blah, blah. Just be consistent. Mm. If, you, if you're consistent and you don't tire out, someone will find you because everyone else around you will quit and without a doubt. Wow. And you will be the only one left standing. So just stick with it. You're doing great. I can't breathe. I <laughs> I, I, I can't. I'm, I'm catching my breath. I receive it. I yes. um, wow. I It is madness and i have had some amazing conversations and i've met some amazing people and i've had people reach out to me and i'm like how do they know me somebody's like i'm so and so's publicist i think they'd be a great guest for lucas live i'm like yeah, i've been nice. doing this for two months who nice. am i how do but you it's know because you're showing up i don't know if you know that like most podcasts end after i think it's less than 10 episodes because people will do the podcast and then they just they just fall off and so they're like super excited so excited to start my podcast 
by 10 episodes are done. Or maybe it's even three. I didn't know I know that. it's not a lot. The number's less than 10. And it's like, and people just quit. So, I mean, like, most people will start something, blog posts, Instagrams, you name it, but they fizzle out when, when they aren't getting attention or when it's not exciting or they didn't make a million dollars and they're fixated on the wrong thing. When you have a why, like family or honoring mm, a legacy, yes. it never fizzles out. It's always there. And so that's why you have to stick with it. And and those people are the ones who deserve to be rewarded, and you're one of them. Like, it's going to work out for you. You just Ooh. have to stick with it. Thank you so much. And absolutely mm -hmm. Honoring my mom's legacy is I just can't mm -hmm. stop because I can't stop thinking about it. Right. It's like, that's right. I remember my mom said, uh, I think about my parents every day. And I was like thinking they've been gone a long, like every day. That sounds right. like a heavy it's load. It's crazy till you're on the other side of it. Right. No, absolutely. Yeah. I tell my kids all the time. I hope you think about me all the time. I regularly remind them someday <laughs> I'm not going to be here. But anytime something goes right in your life, it is specifically because of me. You better be grateful. <laughs> you know, like, if you don't listen to me today, I promise you, I will haunt you. That's what I you tell my kids. You feel too I'm cold back. or your leg hanging out from the covers. It's because I yanked them back <laughs> off of you. So to wake you up. know this. I am with you <laughs> forever. <laughs> and always, babies. right? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And talking about children and yes. your family, and and I, I I've watched the journey, and you guys have been through yes, some very difficult kids. things oh. as a family, and some very exciting mm -hmm. things, and mm -hmm. um, adoption. Okay, um, yeah. my wife was adopted. She was in foster care for years, and then um, was adopted, and and you know, a young teenager. Um, and we have such a heart and we do work with foster youth and those aging out yeah. of foster care to give back because it's in both of our hearts to meet that Absolutely. need. Tell Absolutely. us a little bit about why adoption. You have so much going on. When did you start adopting and why yeah. did you take that step? Why did I even do that stuff? So first things first, we were just going to have kids. Like that was on our mind. We were mm -hmm. able, like we were blessed. Like it was on, we'd been married for seven years. We first were like, our first three years were rocky. Rocky, rocky, rocky. Mm. And so, you know, and marriage is still a constant. You have to work at it. So right. we're always, we have couple therapy, all that stuff, because it's important to it us is. to stay married, right? But with um, the first few years, it was rocky. Then we got really good, and we were like, oh, oh, we are not having kids. We like each other. We're not doing this. You know, like, <laughs> We want to kick it. We, I like you. <laughs> right. right. And then we were like, okay, we won't even talk about it until we hit this mark, and then we're going to talk about having kids. Mm -hmm. Well, God had different plans. And we met our kids, you know, it was unorthodox. And a lot of people can either listen to my podcast, episode one for the long version. But mm -hmm. basically, we met our kids. They were someone in our neighborhood was having a tough time and these and was getting ready to be incarcerated for a year. Mm -hmm. So we actually met our kids through um, we met our kids that way. We met her on the side of the road and wow. we found out what was going on and we didn't want the kids to go in the system. So it was like a diversion plan. Um, and so wow. we'd only known for about a month and we had the kids. So. We ended up with three kids, a three-year-old at that time, a 12-year-old, and a 14-year-old. And they're all sisters. So mm. we ended up having all three girls at once within 30 days. And then, you know, when their, fin their mother finally came out, it was um, very clear, you know, that just based on the complications, right, mm -hmm. of life, that it made sense for us to co-parent at the time. So the kids were with us all the time, but, you know, their mother was still very much, you know, in okay. their life and aware and engaged, you know, especially for our youngest one who doesn't necessarily know the breath of, she knows, uh, she actually has no recollection of ever living anywhere else at this point, because right. she's eight, uh -huh. but, you know, <laughs> her mother's in her life, you know, and, um, and then, you know, before we knew it, it just made sense, we were mom and dad, you know, and wow. we'd been through all the kids' tough stuff, and you know, we'd been raising the little one. And so their, their mother finally signed over full. We had gradual custody all along the way, but full parental custody um, just this past year in March. You know, so we but up until that time, we had like, you know, guardianship and permanent custody and, mm -hmm. you know, all the different legal things. But right. like new birth certificates as of March, you wow. know, so that um, but their mother is still very much in their life. We still talk to her. We still have a relationship. It's never been contentious. It's never been negative. Um, we love and honor her because she has made the toughest decision. Yes. Um, but it was, you know, she knew it was the right decision and we honor her for that. We're grateful for her for, you know, mm -hmm. for doing something so, um, so gracious for her children, you yes. know, and we're grateful that God even put us in a position to be able to help with that, you know, but you never know what you're taking on with kids until you're in it. Yeah. And, um, you know, and every day we say to ourselves, like, we're grateful because they give me a purpose beyond any, they're like literally a representation of God's resilience and willingness to answer prayers. Cause these kids prayed 
to be put into a different life situation. Mm. And the idea that they were literally plucked out of it and put into something different is just a reminder that God can do things suddenly <laughs> if he wants mm. to. And I get to see that walking around my house every day. Like, I can't make excuses because I see it. You know what I yes. mean? So, it's, um, so yeah, that's how parenting happened. And uh, I'm not good at it. You know, I just figure it out as I go. <laughs> True story <laughs> like, for all of us. <laughs> I regularly look at my kids and I'm like, <laughs> especially my 18 year old. So I think I have to parent here. Like this is, you know, like you do what you're supposed to do most of the time, but you're putting me in a situation I'm going to have to parent and I'd really like to not, you know, but you know, there's going to be consequences. Like this right. is where we are right now, you know? And like, you know, and they get it. They're like, yeah, you know, I guess <laughs> like, we have a great relationship. Mom's over here. Mom. And again, like, what is she doing? Mom's mommy, like, but they don't take me seriously. This whole family doesn't. You know, I'm like, you don't understand. Outside these doors, people think I'm important. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm like, the launch, the launch is going great. I made a ton of money. Okay, good for you. Like, oh, I got this great outfit. Look at my overalls. Yeah, you know, it's a little uh, youthful. You know, like, this is how my kids Good cheat. try. You know right. I mean? <laughs> right. But there's so much love here. We're so blessed. Like, we don't just love each other. We genuinely like each other. Wow. And what's great about that is we chose our family. Like, I mean, mm, our girls were old enough. Amazing. And you guys know this from working with older kids also. Yes. We said to them, like, if this isn't what you, like, all along the way, our rule in our family is just being very open. Do you want to do this show or do you not want to do this show? Do you mm. want to be a family? Do you not want to be? Do you want to keep your last name or change your last name? No matter what, we aren't partial to whatever it is, we love you, you're here, like whatever version of what it looks like will will be okay for us. You know what I mean? Just what makes you happy and comfortable. So it really is nice because we genuinely feel like we decided to be together, you know, and, um, and it's going to be that way forever. That's just so beautiful. The comments, shout out to everybody in the comments. I see you. Thank you guys to Kia, my wife, Corinne, Dan, uh, mm -hmm. Danica, JJ, uh, Marlo, everybody. Thank you. Kina, I see you. Now, Kina Woods, a good friend of mine. Uh, her and yeah. her husband had children. And the first of all, she's a huge fan of yours, by the way. So, Oh, that's sweet. Shout out hey, to Kina. Kina Woods. She's a huge <laughs> fan. Uh, <laughs> see, look, Kina, look. Oh, hey, look she's having, uh, she was like, I can't believe it. So, Kina, uh, her and her husband, they had children. I think they have four now. Kina, you correct me if I'm wrong. And they said, oh, God bless you. They said they added their kids to their life. They said we didn't. Mm -hmm. They they I if I if I'm on the phone with her husband Dave, I was on the phone with him at midnight, and I I don't know what was going on. I'm like, did your kid just put your garage down? I mean, wait, that kid right. is like three. Are you locked out? What's going? Right. He's like, I don't know. Right. These kids, they do what they want. They said we added our kids to our lives, and they still live, and they have a business, and they mm -hmm. they're doing things, and they added their kids to their life, even though they had their children. And you sound like very much. You brought these kids in. You added these kids to your life, and it didn't diminish anything. It didn't take away anything. It was all I mean, a we blessing. Built with them, you know, like the thing that we, um, I will say, we intentionally made space for them, but that was more of a, um, a uh, therapeutic thing because mm -hmm. we never wanted them to feel like because when they first came into our into our life when we first met them that was not the trajectory we were on. So like the neighborhood we were in, our home that we lived in, like was not ready for like. You know, we could definitely do a three-year-old, you know, but we were not expecting to have, a, you know, a kid getting ready to go into high school, college. Like, that was not mm. a thing, you know. So, it, and they're so spread out, you know, the, the girls. So, they're all in different life phases. We had someone, go, one going into eighth grade, one going into, you know, like, it was just, it's a lot. Like, I've already done multiple proms, multiple high school graduations, wow. first boyfriends, first apartment, uh, college, um, potty training, first reading, kindergarten. Like, I've done all of that in five years. <laughs> wow. Like, people don't realize, like, it's like compressed parenting, you know? Wow. Like, and so, I mean, the way that we describe it is kind of like what Kina says, where we're just a team. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We're team Walters. And yes. everybody here knows that they all are so valuable parts of this team. Like, everybody's the star QB, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's a star quarterback. So what that means is we all play a part. So if our little one who's eight decides that she doesn't want to make her bed, she doesn't want to do her laundry, she doesn't want to help with stuff, well, guess what? The team is going to have to pick up the slack, which means mm -hmm. we can't do our parts, which will uh, trickle down and affect her. So it's one of those things where – Everybody here knows that, look, we're a team. So no one here is going to go rogue. Even mom, you know, like adults here are part of the team. So if right. I make a decision, like they're counting on me to make responsible decisions. Like I may want to go 
work on the internet, but that's going to affect my paycheck. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're not going to have the same lifestyle, children. We're not going to do Or that. maybe I'll have a new show on VH1, but it's okay. It's right, different. You know, right. You know, that's a different TV that's show. That's a different deal, show, you know? right. No, and my kids know. They're like, we trust that mom's not going to do things like that. That would jeopardize our household. Like, these are things because that's her team job, yes. you know? And like, and our team job is to make sure that we handle this. So, I mean, that's how we see it. We just call ourselves Team Walters. We're a team. Everybody's important here. Everyone has a role. So we're, we're added. They added to our life, but they completed the team because we never could have operated with. I don't I can't imagine my life without my kids. Like, I don't even know. What would I be doing every day? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's amazing. I just love them. I'm so blessed. Now, if you don't mind sharing, you guys yeah. went through a very scary time. I think it's your maybe your 18 year old now. Yeah, my uh, 18 year old now. Yep. Very 18 year old now. Um, can you share with the audience, those who may not know, what sure. what you guys went through as a family with her? Sure. And if you sure. could say her name, say her name so we know yeah, her name. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Chrissy. Chrissy, my mid-time. Chrissy. She's my middle one. So okay. about a year ago, um, and it is about a year because it was May, we found out that she was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Mm. And things escalated really quickly. And I'll just skip to the, for the moms who are listening, I'll skip to the end. She's totally fine, completely is, healed by the stripes of Jesus. You were supposed to Nothing hold on to her. <laughs> And she will never, ever, ever, ever have cancer come over her body again. Amen. So just fast forwarding to the end so that, you know, no one here is like, oh, you know. Yes. But, um, but yeah, you know, for the, you adopt kids and you just, if, I mean, that's the only trial that we've really shared publicly after it was over. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we've had tons of stuff. There's no way my kids come from a background like this where we haven't mm. had stuff happen. Right? Interesting. It's just that not everything makes it to the screen because some things deserve to be private for them it's their story and their life mm -hmm. you know so um in this situation we found out and it was really unexpected um she just wasn't doing well like she wasn't feeling well she was being weird about eating and it it looked like a really bad cold like horrible pneumonia mm. and um and it was winter you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it was you know winter had just passed and it was a cold that wouldn't quit and finally i took her in uh for a visit when i took her in um the doctor was like i think it's just a cold literally just was like i mm. think it's a cold and i was like i need you to run blood work like it's been too long i'm not comfortable like that mom feeling yeah. do the full panel like and they're like oh just a little finger prick no 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 no. no. i need you to draw do blood panel. yes do all the things because i need to know that it's okay and um and she needs to know you yeah. know what i mean so fast forward they call me the next morning first thing in the morning and they're like take her to the er we think it might be cancer mm. and so i will never forget you know where i was that moment how it all played out but i remember the first thing that occurred to me was uh she'll never double negative on purpose she'll never not be um, a cancer survivor at this mm. point. Like everything will change Whew. about who she is mm. from from now forward. Wow. So when I left my, I found out in my room. So when I left my room and I went out and I looked at her and she's sitting on the couch, I remember looking at her and, and thinking, okay, do I tell her now or how do I, because I don't have the actual answer yet, you know, but our mm -hmm. family rule is we're honest, we're open, we tell the truth, we ask questions. If you can ask the question, you'll get an honest answer. Like that's just how we do it here. Yeah. And so... I wanted to tell her right away to like be an in integrity, but then there's the parenting part of like, do you tell you, you, you don't just bring stuff on your kids without more answers. Like you kind of balance things out. Sure. So I look at her and then finally came down to, I was like, you know what? These are her last few moments. Like everything's already mm -hmm. different for me. And part of being a mom is, you know, I'll hold it a little longer, you know? So I mm -hmm. held it and I just let her, while I coordinated everything else, and I just let her sit for a couple few moments, you know, knowing that on this day, it's the last chance that she'll be, you know, 17 and, Wow. You know, this is it for her, you know, and yeah. uh, for this moment, yeah. you know, but at no point in time did I think, um, you know, we went to the hospital, we got the diagnosis and we went from there. Now, at no point in time did we think um, that she wasn't going to make it. That was without question. I would have sold my toenails if that's what it came down to to right. make sure she had a cure. I literally looked at them and I said, how much does it cost? Where is the answer located? Is, it, is there an exper uh, experimental therapy in Australia? We're going. I would have shut my business down. Mm. I would have lived out of one box. Like, And our whole family was on the same page. Like, there's, There was nothing that Amazing. I wouldn't do to save my child's life, right? Amazing. And God being so good, um, he already had us doing the things we needed to do in advance. So there was money saved up. Our bills were paid. I hired up my team. Like I was already, we were debt free. So we mm. literally were able to get through it when I think of what we went through and how we went through it, it literally, we could focus all our energy on her. So I would, I already had some things I'd booked contractually that I had to go to. So I would fly from the hospital to these gigs in New York, you know, and then I would, you know, fly right back to the hospital and like sleep next to her, you mm. know, like real time, same day. And the hardest part 
and this is something that I think you, uh, you know, especially as your star starts to climb, is uh, still showing up every mm. single day, like live, and you know, because we weren't sharing it publicly, and I was so yeah. used to sharing everything. And I couldn't share it because it's her journey. And I'm also a big believer in one of my rules about what I share and how much I share is that I don't, um, I don't share my scabs. I only share my scars. Mm. So I don't want to share p- things while I'm healing and while I'm going through it because it's I don't beautiful. really have much to offer. You know, like yeah. there's not, and that's not fair to just take people through the pain if you aren't going to give them a solution, you know. And so once everything was through and we were on the other side, you know, I looked at my daughter and I said, so we can keep this totally quiet and never tell anyone, you know, like it's up to you or we can say something if you want to say something. And her response was, I want to tell my story. And I was like, hundred uh, percent. It's not my thing. And she, the other thing she said was, I, I can't keep it to myself because I might help somebody. And that was Amazing. like such a proud moment for me. Um, so she did, she shared everything and, um, you know, it's a little video on YouTube. She shared her story, kind of what we went through and what it looked like. And, um, and now she's back to just driving me utterly crazy. Like she's graduated. <laughs> like she's supposed you know, from to. High school. Oh, it's like nothing changed. Yes. Like, it's like nothing changed. Like, I mean, she, like the minute she was done with chemo and the doctor said she had a clean bill of health, our family, we're, we're messed up. She would be like, mom, can you, she was totally healthy, right? <laughs> mom, can you get me something to drink from the bathroom? I look, I'm like, you don't have cancer in your legs. Get up. <laughs> like, <what you> think? <laughs> there are no rules. Your mama is. It's over. Right. Get up, you get up girl. You're kids. good. <laughs> get up. You to make moves and she'd be like oh you know right. like teenager just milking it yep. you know and i'm like no 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 it's over now you need to get back to life right. like we don't live you know I like god it. granted you don't life, live you, don't use it, you know yes. so now she's back to normal you know she graduated going to college had a 4.0 got a full scholarship i mean she's just an awesome kid and i'm just blessed to see her she took this on and and beat it like a champ i watched the story with tears in my yeah. eyes thinking yeah. how would i deal with that um, I love the, you, you just do. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. And you talked about how you had positioned yourself, which I have so much respect for. You said, um, you had your bills paid off and you said, I was in position to tell those doctors, whatever it takes, like, look at me. I mean okay. it, whatever mm-hmm. it takes. I'm whatever not somebody who can't afford, mm-hmm. I will make it happen. Mm-hmm. Save and my time. And it was time. a powerful thing that I actually recommend no matter what your financial position is to mm. say that, um, if money is not an object what course of treatment would you recommend? Like, Mm. it's a powerful statement that a lot of people don't ask because we just assume that the doctor is giving us the right course of treatment. And and it's not that doctors actively aren't. It's just that sometimes there are assumptions that are made about your means and what you can cover and Mm. your time and your efforts and whatever else. And whenever we said that, we were given like a wealth of options. Like, Mm. well, do you want to do all your chemo at once? Or do you want to spread it out over 10 months? Or do you want to do an advanced method? Or do you want to do these? And so, Mm. and we were like, money's not an object. If money wasn't an object, what would you do for your own child? Mm. Like, these are the questions that we would ask. And I am not going to lie to you. If it wasn't for wealth, I would not know. Or I'm not wealthy. I'm rich. I got money, but I'm not wealthy. <laughs> like, it wasn't, it wasn't for, stay for, tuned, for ladies and gentlemen. I know. Stay tuned. I'm speaking over my life. Yes. So let's be honest wealth about where is I on am. the way. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, but if it wasn't for being in that financial, you know, safety, you know, that place, I wouldn't have even thought to ask that. Usually it's just oh gosh, how much is it going to cost? And you're worried. You should always ask that no matter what your bank account says, because you might find out that there are alternatives that you want to engage in. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. that was a big thing for us. And then, you know, when the final bill came in, it was six figures, you know, it was, um, I think I posted a picture of it on Instagram. And I remember thinking to myself, uh, we, I mean, we just cut the check. <laughs> that yeah, was like, I remember you saying that. You know, yeah. yeah uh, the final, final, final bill that came in was for like leftover prescriptions for the for chemo meds, and it was like forty dollars. And we like paid it. We were like, <laughs> it's like kind of ironic because at one point we only had twenty four dollars in our bank account. You know, when we, when I first started this journey, and so mm. I look back and I'm like, if this forty dollar check had come in just a couple of years ago, we wouldn't, if, I mean, I'm telling you, if we'd met these, if our daughter had still been with her biological parents, she wouldn't be here. It was mm. stage four. You know, if we hadn't had the money and if we hadn't, you know, started making the moves and decisions we made when we did, would we have been where we were? If we hadn't moved to Atlanta, would we have only been 15 minutes away from the hospital where she got treatment? Like mm. there's so many things. God. If she had gotten this year, she gotten cancer this year versus last year, we would have had coronavirus to contend with. Oh like there are so many things that just they're constant walking, living, breathing reminders to me of God's just faithfulness and how sufficient he is and how mm. on time he is. And 
that is priceless. Like I, I am grateful to them every day for doing that for me because they don't have to, you know. So I'm like blessed to be their mom. It is. I mean, uh, I'm having a hard time. Um, I, know, I could go on all day about my baby. No, uh, it's just kidding. bringing I tears know. to my eyes. I, so. you know, my mom passed away from breast cancer and. I don't, I don't know if we ask those questions with that level of confidence, you know, and it kind of makes me sad. I, I actually, we were going to bring her home on hospice and that was, she passed away on a Thursday on the 26th on Wednesday. She just had enough and, uh, she wasn't really eating and all that we had been going through. Mm -hmm. And my sister ended up being able to talk to her cause we hadn't been able to see her because she was in the Cleveland Clinic, one of the most amazing hospitals in the oh, world, yeah, absolutely. Um, which is just an hour from us, which was amazing. And um, But they shut everybody out because of coronavirus. And it was the week yep. before she passed. They were like, yep. no visitors, everybody out, nobody yep. else. So my sister yep. talked to her on the phone. And because of this, my mom was not, she didn't die because of the coronavirus, but she she couldn't keep fighting alone. She was like, of I course. can't do it. I need to come home. And the mm -hmm. decision was... And, but she couldn't afford, we couldn't afford for her to come home and, and have the, she, she was getting platelets and blood transfusions oh, daily. Of course, you still need regular stuff. Yeah, daily things. Absolutely. And comfort items too. Like for, so you're comfortable because it hurts, yes. you know? So yeah. She was coming home and we wouldn't be able to afford the ambulance rides back and forth to the mm -hmm. hospital every mm -hmm. day. So she mm -hmm. was coming home to die. I mean, I remember that Wednesday before she passed, I just cried and cried and cried. I was like, mm -hmm. she's made a decision to come home and die. And part of the reason is, we couldn't afford any other option. We could not afford mm -hmm. to have her in and out of because they said insurance is not going to cover that. If she comes home, right. they're not going to put her back and forth in an ambulance every mm -hmm. day. It is what mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And that was the decision that she knowingly made. And there are a lot of people in that position. I love what you said. Go at it with the yep. confidence that you can, that you will, that mm -hmm. you'll find a way. You'll figure it out on the back end. Mm -hmm. And you'll figure it out later. And I hope that mm -hmm. motivates and liberates somebody out there who's dealing with this. Now, Nicole, we are yep. we're at the top of the hour. We said this was going to be one hour. Sure. I just want to ask you one more question. I know you're a busy, busy yeah. person. What's but up? if you could just share with us just a little bit about your faith and your relationship with God. I know it because I'm following you. Sure. I... God, everything I have and everything I am, the only the peace I have is because of God. They said it's, He will give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. And I never knew what it was mm -hmm. like until I was holding my mom's hand and she was gone. And I was in the mm -hmm. room, and me and my dad were listening to worship music. And I'm like, I'm not. I wasn't even crying. It was the craziest yep. thing. It's so a comfort. talk to us it's about so your faith. Feeling. Yeah. So it's. Um, I always like to jokingly say, like, I'm not. I'm a. I'm a new Christian. Like, I'm recently baptized. You know, <laughs> meaning like the water hasn't soaked in all the way yet. I'm still working still on it. Still like, off. I'm not reading. It's dribbling <laughs> off. I have moments. You know, uh -huh. like I can't read the King James version. I read the Message version because it's either it's the message is kind of hood. It's like, right, yo, what up, Jesus? You know, Nothing, Peter. Right, you know, but I'm like, I get what they're saying, though. Right. You know? So it's like, right. so, I mean, I say all of that to say that I don't consider myself fancy. I mean, I really do break it down to just one, whatever I'm doing, I really want to make sure that I please him and people see him. That's, mm, that's like the, wow. the easiest thing for me in everything I do. So when I come, when I make, it doesn't mean I'm perfect. I definitely do some stuff sometimes. I'm like, man, that was. Uh, that was totally feeding like my ego or my own insecurity or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, but as long as I can bring it back to him, like, so what does that mean about where I am and how can I avoid the thing that I did, you know, mm -hmm. and just being very open about it. Now, what does that mean in business and in life? It's scary. I'm not mm -hmm. even going to lie. It's really scary to talk about my faith. One, because Christians will come at you harder than anyone else. Mm -hmm. That's first, you know, and wow. people don't grant you grace as in recognizing that, Christianity is just like entrepreneurship. You're learning all mm, the time. Say that. So Amen. for me, it's like, I am, I'm totally humble. Like one of the things that I asked about, um, you know, like humble in my Christianity, I'm not so humble about my business, but I know my business. <laughs> Tell you them know? what you <laughs> can like, do. You know, I don't remember, but when it comes to Christianity, like I really am like, I don't know how this is supposed to work. And I'm trying to figure this thing out. And is this the, you know, is, is my understanding of this correct in practice or, mm. you know, like call me out. But the thing that has happened is, I found that in being vocal about it, one, it's freed other people to feel vocal about their faith in their business. Two, mm -hmm. it has allowed people to meet Christ in a different way, mm -hmm. you know, where they used to think that the relationship with Christ was like, it wasn't allowed to be flawed and it wasn't allowed to be messy and it wasn't allowed to be that you're figuring it out or that you aren't allowed to have moments where you're vulnerable and crying, you know, like it allows people to realize like, oh, okay, a this is like, I like to call it regular Jesus, like sneaky <laughs> Jesus, like I'm just like... 
I'm not fancy. I'm not posh. I'm not like preaching about anything. I'm just like, this is just the language that I speak from the same way that mm. a vegan would talk to, you would know that when they are speaking about whatever they're speaking about, it's going to inform their perspective. Right. So I, that's all that, that's why I share it. Like I consider Christianity the way that I consider that I am black or mm-hmm. that, um, you know, it's just a part of who I am I love that that. I want ma- to make sure it's clear so that people understand that and recognize that because I'm a Christian by, at least by my definition, you are welcome here. Mm. So you're welcome. It means that you're safe here to share your fears and your vulnerabilities and know that I will extend you grace. And, th- and that is the best that I can offer. Doesn't mean I'll have the right answers. Doesn't mean I'm perfect. Doesn't mean no, Jesus is, but I can extend grace mm. and I can always try to help point you in the direction that'll help you grow. So what I do in my business, that's how I try to reflect in my life. But in my business, you know, I might be following you know, Harvard Business School, you know, concepts, but in my life, I'm trying to follow, you know, a walk with Jesus concept. And I'm just candid about it. And I hope that, it, it, and I always hope it doesn't scare people off, you know, because yeah. that's not my intention. Yeah. Um, but I found that it really doesn't seem to, because my, my business is really diverse. People are like, no, I'm an atheist. It's just that you're not gross about it. You know what I mean? Like, you're not, it doesn't feel gross around right. you. Like, it doesn't feel like I'm not allowed to be here. Yes. And I'm like, no, not only are you allowed to be here, you're allowed to be here and speak up. If you think I say something that doesn't make sense, I'm not threatened by it. I, I know it. Christ. Yes. So I don't need to be threatened by somebody saying they don't. You right. know what I mean? Yes. So, and if they say they don't, then I'll say like, okay, well, tell me more about that. And I can sit there and I can listen without even responding, you mm-hmm. know, to anything, you know, and maybe that reaction alone is what changes their relationship where they're like, who is that guy? You yes. know, like who knows, you know, but I don't know. I just, it's part of who I am and I just share that openly. Um, but I also make no pretenses that I'm like good or right or doing it the right way or whatever like that. Like it's just, it just is, you know? Oh, I love it. Love it. That was, listen, that is the journey I'm on right now. I, I accidentally became religious. I didn't know Mm -hmm. it. I had just been hanging around church so long and it soaks in. Yeah. It like, it gets in your skin and you're like pretty soon, but then you become more religion than relationship with Christ and then you find yourself just doing the right things or acting in this way and it's like that's not even who I am like I always said I'm the unchurchiest church person you'll ever meet I'm not right, I'm not right. some crazy rebel but I went right. to church every Sunday I went I went to an unchurchy church I said my church isn't mm-hmm. that churchy because I right. never felt I didn't want to conform to this thing that I saw so many times it goes left And um, I just want to have a great relationship and I want to encourage others to have a great relationship Mm -hmm. and I want to sneak people with Christ. I want to like, you're doing business, you're doing amazing things and then you'll just, you're just peppering it in there. Not because you're even trying. It's just who you are. Right. You're just It's just who I am. Free. Well, because I believe that God's pursuing. It's not my job. I don't need, this is not what I'm here to do. I'm here to be an example so that that way as he's pursuing, I'm providing validation of the truth that he's speaking. That's all that is. It's not my job to sit here and be all beaten. You're, oh, do you know Christ? Do you know Christ? <laughs> oh, trust me. Christ knows them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> He's got this. Show a little bit, you know? Right. So I do what I can. I, I love do what it. I love it. I love it. Nicole, <laughs> you have been... As amazing as I ever would have expected, and some. Oh, you're too kind. Uh, we're all over the place. I'm like, are we going to talk about my favorite brand of cereal? Like, I really feel like we're going to, because you started off with, is anything off limits? I was like, well, I don't know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> what is he going to ask? This could be crazy. Know, this is good. I did want to share, and I did want to hear the story about your daughter, and I wanted to make sure that, you know, that could be sensitive, but you said, if you know it, it's because I shared it. I love that. You know, because I shared it. Yeah, it's yes. true. Yeah, and it's, I'm not... I mean, honestly, we always talk about, especially with the TV show coming out, what if, is there something people are going to, what if, you know, because they're going to look into all aspects of your life. There's nothing that I am, because I'm confident in Christ, I guess, Mm -hmm. like, there's nothing that I'm like, oh, well, there isn't a reason for that, or this isn't the way it is, or, you know, like, and everything kind of, again, like you said, when you met me, it was aligned with who I am online. Everything yes. still comes down to this is who I am. There's nothing anyone would find out about me that they wouldn't be like, oh, that makes sense. Nicole would react that way. Right, or, right. Oh, that makes sense. Like, that is who she is, you know? Or, oh, and like, and if somebody made something up, that's a great thing about being a Christ follower. If you're consistent in what you do, mm-hmm. if somebody even makes stuff up about you, like, this is something that's always shocking to me about, like, celebrities and stuff. If someone makes something up about you and it's not consistent with your character, one would hope that it would sound so outlandish that no one would believe it it would be a whopper you know what i mean so it's like one of those things where and if somebody does believe it then that just says more about them than you right you know consider the source you know so that's kind of how um, i'm trying to live my life it's just kind of is anything that i do in the dark i hope i'd be okay with it being in the light you know what i mean i love it 
Uh, if you could just tell us now, um, my wife yeah. and I are 1K One Day alumni. Yeah. Can you tell uh-huh. others out there, they're looking to build their business, their brand. Sure. Um, how can they get a hold of you? What do you have to offer them? Just please share yourself with them so they know how they can so continue kind. to be Thank in touch. You. So- you're so great. So you can find out everything about me at NicoleWalters.com. You can also go to Nicole Walters all around the internet, Twitter, Instagram, just Nicole Walters, my name. That's where you can find me. And if you're looking to work with me or my business in any way to build yours, uh, you can head to 1K1Day.com. Uh, we're actually enrolling now, which is, cool. you know, timely. What season? Yeah, what what, what uh, group or cohort cycle? is this? Yeah, we're on cycle 12 now. Wow. So this is our 12th group Amazing. of students, which is bananas right. but it's also um we haven't been promoting it much because i've really been dedicating my platform to injustice you know and just trying to make sure that I i'm using that. my voice in this season you know the way that i've been called so we haven't gotten the word out about it much but it's still you know god being so good we're still enrolling it's going great you know but oh, yeah. um you know if people are interested they can join there if not you can just come hang out with me around the internet like it's it's a good time <laughs> i love it i love it i love it you are an open book You've shared your life. You've shared your story. You've shared your experiences live in front of us. I can't wait to see you on TV. I don't know if I can set my my DVR now um, or what. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. But look out this fall. We'll see what happens. I cannot wait. That is going to be so cool. And I'll be able to say she was on Lucas Live. Now, only other thing, I'm going to talk to Tanya. I need you to add Lucas Live to, you know, you were on Good Morning America, Yahoo, and Women's Day. Oh, God. God. And Lucas Live. And Lucas Live. I mean, you know what I mean? Makes sense. I get it. Why not? Why not? (laughs) Thank you so much. You've been amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, please go follow Nicole Walters. Check her out all over social media. Um, Check out those Instagram stories. Check out her podcast. Check her out everywhere you can find her. And go to NicoleWalters.com. It is an investment in you. We, uh, We always think... Well, I don't know if I can afford to pay that to them or why do they need my money or what? No, no, no. You're not investing in her. You're investing in you so that you can build the business that you want, so that your side hustle can become your main hustle, so that you can quit that nine to five if that's what you want to do. She can give you the tools and the skills. 1K one day is about finding a way to make $1,000 a day. Imagine if you did that. Imagine how your life would change. Imagine how you could take care of your child if your child were to get sick or a loved one Mm -hmm. or a family member. Imagine how you could give to the organizations and the causes that are so pressing to you right now and you want to do more. And and we're marching and we're pushing and we're hopefully voting and we're doing all those things. And there's people out there every day who need some funding. They need some dollars. They need some help to further their cause. And we want to be the people who can continue to support and be behind that movement. So check out Nicole Walters at NicoleWalters.com. Nicole, I can't thank you enough for your time, for your energy, for your passion, for your love, for the life you spoke into me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're so kind. Thank you so much for having me here. I I get to say I was one of the first on the Lucas Live. It's a big deal. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody, <laughs> thank you guys for being here. You guys are amazing. We're Lucas Live because we have the livest audience. You guys are wonderful. Everybody, we'll see you again tomorrow night at 7 p.m. We can't wait to see you again. Take care, everybody. Have a